Hi, welcome to my review of my Stromer ST7. I've had this bike now for about six months, and first of all, it's an amazing machine. I really enjoy riding it. I'm having a blast owning it. I think it's an absolute beast. I've done another video when I first bought the bike about some of the changes I made to it. The seat and some other items don't look exactly stock. You can go to that video and figure out what I did to it. But as far as the bike itself, it has been absolutely amazing, and I can't say enough good things about it. However, that being said, now having owned it for about six months, I figured it's time to do a review, and for those of you considering buying the bike, I'll give you my owner experience so far, what I really like about the bike, some details around it, and then also some things that I think that could be improved on, especially the of this bike. First off, let me say that I actually stumbled upon the brand and, and then once I learned more about the company and their mission and what they're actually trying to do and how people are actually using these bikes in Europe, I was absolutely immediately hooked. And I think that was a big part of my buying decision. I know there's a lot of critics out there, especially for those in Europe, that these bikes are a little bit more common and you use them more as vehicles than a hobby, that there's some people out there that kind of critique these bikes a little bit harder than maybe we do in the United States. That being said, though, I think it's an absolute uh, beauty of a bike. I think it's super well built. One thing I really like about the bike is there are absolutely no welds. When you look at other brands like Reese & Mueller, or even some bikes here in the United States like a Venton, you're going to see these giant weld lines. Some people are into that. For me, I really love the clean, smooth design that this bike has. The other thing I really like about the bike itself is that the Omni display and the information that you get from it is absolutely amazing. It reminds me a lot of my Tesla, and I think that's what they're trying to be, where you get over-the-air updates, and the bike is continually improving itself over the owner experience. One thing that I think is also a plus is just the equipment that's on the bike. You have ABS brakes in the front. You have giant discs, both front and rear, four-piston brake calipers, and so the bike itself is just really well-equipped. The pinion is absolutely an amazing shifting system. It shifts fast, it shifts accurate. You don't have to worry about what gear you're in or what gear you're going into. You could shift while you're stopped. So if you have to brake suddenly and then all of a sudden get into gear, the bike does that automatically based on the gear that you pre-select. So for me, I like to start in gear five or six. So I just set that in the Omni. And every time I stop, the bike shifts down into that gear. Conversely though, I think that the pinion gearbox is maybe overranged. There's 12 speeds on this bike. You're never, I've never been in gear one or two. There's like super granny gear. Even on a steep hill, I don't get maybe below gear four. On the upside though, I wish there was a gear 13 or 14, just because you're able to maneuver this bike so quickly that I feel like sometimes it just, if it had maybe an extra gear on the top end, that you could get rid of any kind of ghost pedaling that might happen um, at those higher speeds. But once you understand the ranges or, or pedal ranges within each gear, the shifting becomes super easy and super intuitive. And like I said, it's really quick. So if you're in the wrong gear, you can get in the right gear in a second. The other thing that I really love about this bike is that there's no chain or derailleur to deal with. It's got the Gates carbon belt, and you can, it's rattle free, it's smooth. You're not dealing with anything on the back end of the bike that's, that's moving around. It's just a, a very a unique experience if you've never driven a belt drive bike before. My buying experience with the bike was interesting. I bought the bike last year. There were some supply chain issues. They were delivering this bike in Europe in this particular color. I didn't really prefer the yellow color, so I had to wait quite a while. I think I ordered the bike in February and I received the bike in July. So that was quite a while. The other thing that was interesting to me is in the state of Nevada, where I live in the Las Vegas area, they didn't have any dealers. My closest dealer was in the next state over in Utah. Shout out to IBB Cyclery and Kirk. Over there, he made the buying experience amazing, but I did have to trek out there and go get the bike. And then once I was there and the bike was delivered, Kirk did a complete fitting. I've never had a, a professional fitting done before. He's an absolute super nerd in a good way on bike fittings. 
and he worked with me on getting the exact setup that I need and all the components that, that actually fit me. He was able to get me up on this thing and making sure that everything was absolutely perfect. So when I took it home, I can just enjoy it. Thanks to Kirk and all the team there at IBB, it was a fun day. The other thing is that Stromer's interesting because if you need to get it serviced beyond the basic things, you have to pretty much take it back to a Stromer dealer. We'll get into that in a minute. But so far that hasn't happened too much. I did have to have the rear brakes bled. And so I had a mobile service come out and do that. Other than that, the bike has been absolutely bulletproof for the exception of one thing, which we'll get into in a moment. But I do wish there was more Stromer dealers in my area. And, and that would be just even better from not only from a service standpoint, but also from a sense of community standpoint with this particular bike. These things here, especially in uh, the United States, are, are pretty rare. At one point, I think I was told the ST7s were only about 50 of them in the United States so far. There is a Facebook group on the ST7, which is cool to talk to other Stromer owners, but it would be nice to have an expert in town that, that really knew about these bikes and how they work. That being said, let's get into the areas that I really like about the bike. One is this thing is extremely fast. Yes, it's a class three bike. Uh, yes, they all go 28 miles an hour and they're, they're limited at 28. You can push it to um, 29, 30. That's not too much of a challenge to go beyond that. I think to get faster than that, if you're going downhill with the wind behind your back and you're not pedaling, the bike will go faster. Outside of that though, if you're trying to push it or pedal it beyond the 28, 29, 30 miles an hour range, the bike will actively push you back meaning that it's going to resist you. It will not let you pedal faster, so you can't break through that limiter. So it's not how fast will the bike go, but how fast can you get to that speed. This bike will get there real fast. The bike seems to want to cruise with average effort in the 20 to 26 mile an hour range, plus or minus a couple miles an hour here and there. And that seems to be a real comfortable pace. You can absolutely crank it into sport and get to that, that 28 limit with no problem. Whether it's going uphill, whether it's on a level surface, you're cruising at, at that top speed for any length of time that you want to. But comfortably, you're in that 25 mile an hour range. There is no throttle on this bike, given it's a class three, and it is European specs, so no throttle whatsoever and, and no opportunity to get a throttle. The other thing I lo love about this bike it's the build quality. Everything on this bike is super solid. We talked about the seamless welds before, but everything is just built like a tank. It's heavy. This bike weighs about 85 pounds, and it is an absolute beast. You feel that. You feel that on the road as well. From a stability standpoint, this bike is hefty, so you feel very confident in how this bike responds to the road, but every little bump you hit, you're going to feel as well we have a lot of potholes out here. If you end up hitting a pothole by mistake, you're going to feel it, and it, it's heavy. It's a beast. Getting this thing on and off a bike rack is also interesting because it is so heavy, or even just moving it to the backyard to do this video, it was, it's a challenge because it's, it is a beefy bike. But it is also built solid. No rattles, no squeaks, no creaks. It is just a tank, and it feels like you're driving a tank as well. So now let's talk about some things that I think that are opportunities with this bike. We just talked about the weight. I think that is a strength in some cases, but I also think there's an opportunity. I think there's an opportunity to use maybe a different material, especially for the price point of this bike, maybe a carbon fiber or some sort of composite material to keep the weight down. And so therefore it's a little bit more manageable to transport or even from an efficiency standpoint to get maybe a little bit more range or speed out of the bike. When you have the motors off and you just want to ride this as a bicycle, I'm about 210 pounds, the bike weighs 85 pounds. That's a lot of weight to be putting on this bike without any kind of pedal assist or any kind of energy going into the bike. You can do it. It's just a heavy machine compared to maybe a regular hybrid normal bicycle that's not an e-bike that is probably in the 30 to 40 pound range. This is more than double that. The other thing that I think there's an opportunity for Stromer to look at is this bike has a lot of potential to be like a Tesla, where it's constantly updating itself over the air. There's a 4G 
cellular receiver in this, so you get 4G service. You can find the bike on a map if it gets stolen. There's all kinds of things you can do to manipulate the bike uh, with the uh, Stromer app. But I think they can take that maybe even one level more. I'd love to see a Wi-Fi chip in here. So when you're at home, you can get Wi-Fi connectivity. And I think that would help to get those over-the-air updates, maybe either bigger ones or faster than using 4G cellular, which if the bike is in your garage, you may not get the best signal. So I think there's an opportunity there. The other thing I'd love to see is on the Stromer app to have it integrated with Health Kit, with Apple, or even Android if they have a Health Kit type function. So that way it can track your rides and your health and fitness without having to start a workout in the Apple's ecosystem. It could just pull everything off the bike and then import that into your workouts. The, the other thing I would love to see as well is a, a better service mode. So you can get into some service menus within the Omni to do diagnostics and things like that. There's a magic brake lever, hold this button down, and then he gets you into the secret mode kind of thing. But you really can't do a lot in there. It's, it gives you a little bit more information, but I'd love to be able to see that information actually in the app itself. And then if there was a possibility to understand some of the errors that you get within, I think that would be a better experience than having these kind of cryptic codes and then you have to go either search on forums or ask other people or figure out if there's a secret document out there somewhere that says, okay, what does code 012345 mean? It should just all be in the app and it should be really intuitive. So that way you know what's going on with the bike. If there's an opportunity for you to troubleshoot it or fix it, to go ahead and do that. Again, somewhat similar to the Teslas where they have that service menu that you can hold down a button in the, on the screen in the Tesla. It would bring you to a service mode. Now, obviously, it would be at your own risk. And if you wanted to make adjustments to things, that's on you. But I would rather have that opportunity than not have that opportunity, especially given that there's no Stromer dealers in my state. So to be able to do things on your own or have the bike reset itself through, through the app, I think, would be a, a huge benefit. One other thing I think is, a, is an opportunity is these tires. These tires are great. They're Pirelli Angel ST Sports. They're, I think it's a 27 and a half inch wheel. These things are really grippy and really great if you're on smooth surfaces or concrete or asphalt. The one issue that I have, and maybe this is just in my local area, any kind of off-roading, meaning dirt trails or any kind of non-paved surfaces, especially here in the desert, is going to usually consist of sand and loose granite. And when you take this bike anywhere where there is dirt on the road, it will slip and slide. It gives you a unique experience. You have to really slow down and be a little bit ginger about it. Maybe in Europe where these things have dirt trails or maybe a small pack gravel, they might function fine but these tires are completely slick with some small indented grooves on them. And so I think that having an option for something with just a little bit more grip would be beneficial. I don't think knobby tires would fit on this or do very well, but something in between with just a little bit more grip, I think would be great. Okay, now let's talk about a couple problems I've had with the bike. And there's only been a couple. One was pretty major. And then the other, like I said earlier, was just a, a brake bleed issue on the right brake. But the major issue that I had with this bike was on the pinion system. And again, the smart shift system is absolutely amazing. However, my bike had, a, had an issue with it where it just stopped shifting. I was out on a ride and the bike would not shift out of gear one, which is the granny gear. And I could not get it to shift. Luckily, I wasn't that far from home, so I was able to pedal it back home in granny gear and then I tried everything that I possibly can do and there was nothing in the troubleshooting guides there was nothing around getting any kind of help for it I even called around some Stromer dealers they had never heard of that problem and they're like you have to bring it in I called my my guy at IBB which I, where I bought the bike from he had never heard of that problem and it took a while for Stromer to get engaged I, I had to actually contact Stromer directly and once I was able to talk to somebody, things moved really well. It was finding the right people 
that knew what the problem was or knew how to diagnose the problem, that was the issue. And so it took a while for Stromer to get together with Pinion and figure out what was happening with the bike. I would try to recalibrate the system within the Omni. It wouldn't calibrate. It didn't register that I was doing anything with the shift levers. And in fact, I thought maybe it was the shift lever piece that was broken because you would click these buttons and nothing would happen down below. I thought maybe it was a battery issue or a power issue, loose wire. I went through whatever I can get through. What it ended up to be was these things. And it's, this is it's the faceplate that's on the, by the pedals here where it says Smart Shift. This was the original one that came on the bike. Pinion then uh, expressed another one out to me. And then this one here, they called me and said, oh wait, don't use this. There's a challenge with this one too. And I had to wait quite a while to get parts sent back to me so they can get that piece replaced. The great thing is that once Pinion figured out what the defect was on these issues, they were able to resolve it on the new one. And the other great thing is in working with Stromer and Pinion, they were able to find a local bicycle shop that was able to put that part back on for me. Shout out to Jason at Las Vegas Cyclery. If you're in the Las Vegas area, they were absolutely amazing. They had never seen this kind of bike before. They had never worked on it before, but they got help from Pinion and Stromer and they had to drop the entire gear box. It looks like an easy part to fix. It's just a three screws and a wire. And it's, I think I can do that myself, right? But the, the way that Stromer chose to, to mount the gearbox is they moved it in a way where you can't get to the, the other part of this wire without dropping the whole unit. So I would rather have them do it than not. On that same note about Pinion though, is I think they build a, a bulletproof product. And I think that was one of the things that attracted me to this bike. I want to try to get Pinion care for this. So in case this happens again, that it'd be covered by Pinion care, but they don't even have an option for the smart shift gearboxes to get Pinion Care on. So I need to email them and figure out how to get that done. But other than that, this bike has been absolutely flawless. I've not had one other issue with it whatsoever. And again, I think the one opportunity that I see that's really glaring is I wish Stromer had a better um, dealer network in my state. One other thing that's interesting to me is this Wren air suspension or fork. You can pump it up. So on, on one side, there's a an air connector where you can set the different uh, pressure. On the other side, there's a dampening. There's not really a lot of instructions on how to do that. Stromer does give you some advice about getting two people and measuring and all this other stuff. But if you're on your own, you're, you, there's no possible way you can do that. So I'll either have to bring it in and figure out if somebody can help me set that up. And really, I've just been playing with uh, different pressures and whatnot to see if I can get it dialed in. Currently, I'm running around 70 pounds of pressure in the, in the suspension, but and that may be a little bit too hard. And so we'll see what I can dial in there. But if there was an easier way to set that, I think that'd be great. And on the rebound, if you can do that on a dial that was a little, maybe a little bit more exposed, as opposed to taking a cap off, getting an Allen wrench going through, there's really not any labeling on the nut in there to say, okay, which ways more rebound or less rebound. It just says turn it this way or turn it that way. And it just, I don't know. I, to me, it's confusing, but maybe I'm just new to this. And maybe, so if somebody wants to comment below on how to do this correctly, I'd appreciate it. So there's my owner review of the Stromer ST7. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, it's a great bike. It's an expensive bike. You can go to the Stromer website and price one out for yourself. It is at the, the top end of what a bike should be probably. But I think what you're getting out of this is you're getting a giant battery at 160 miles. You're getting a super powerful motor. You're getting a 48 volt system. I'll leave some specs down below in the comments so you can check it out for yourself about all the stuff that this bike comes with. The equipment is top notch. The components are great. The build quality is great. Paint is flawless. And it is, again, it's super fun to ride. I can't wait to ride this thing. I'm going to go out today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this bike, leave me a comment below. I don't have a very big channel. I, I do read all my comments. And if you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to answer them for you. If you're considering one of these, go test drive it. 
I think what's interesting about the, the pricing on this is the new ST5 that's coming out, also with the Pinion Smart Shift. I think it's a nine speed gearbox, if I'm not mistaken. And the bike's gonna be a little bit lighter, uh, maybe a little bit less range, but you're gonna get all the, the same performance out of it for the most part. Again, all these bikes go 28 miles an hour, so it's not how fast will the bike go and one goes faster than the other. It's really the experience of getting there. And so I think with the new ST5, I think you should look at that versus this and see what makes financial sense. Uh, when I first looked at bikes, it was the ST3 that I was mo mostly interested in. And then I saw this thing and I just, I really loved it. So it was more of an aesthetic thing and it was more of a, the build quality and the way it looked. And then all the things that this bike had on it that the ST3 didn't have. Do you need all this stuff? Probably not. An ST3, an ST5, even the ST2s are great bikes. I would never go back to a chain driven bike again. I think the Gates carbon belt is the way to go. And when you look at other e-bikes that are out there, it's really hard to look at anything else. Even though there are $2,000 bikes that go 40 miles an hour, they're just not built the same. You don't know what you're getting quality wise and they're selling a product that really doesn't have a mission behind them. So again, I really love this bike. Highly recommend it if you want to get one yourself. I'm not affiliated with Stromer in any way, shape, or form, but I will leave the link to their website for the United States and for Europe. I recommend that if you have a dealer in your area that has one of these, go test drive it. It's a blast even if you just test drive it. With that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.